Hello YouTube, uh, I'm Jerry Kirkpatrick and this is going to be a two-part video all in one. Uh, luckily April's computer uh, blew its brains out the other day so I'm going to be taking the magnet out of the hard drive and I do this every time uh, I get a computer when my own go away as soon as they're up and running the new one is up and running again I'll take it and uh, pull the magnet uh, it's a rare earth very strong magnet that's in every one of the hard drives and uh, I'll show you how I take that out that'll go real quick and then as soon as uh, I get the the magnet broken away from its mount. Then I'll show you some of the places uh, that I use the magnets in. And uh, it's quite extensive. You'll be surprised at uh, some of the places I use magnets. So uh, let's get this thing torn apart. And usually I, I like to keep the, the magnet only and then destroy the hard drive uh, before it's thrown away at the dump. I like to keep the magnet out of the hard drive and any cooling fans that might be present in the machine. So just after uh, I turned the camera off, obviously, uh, I found that what I was pointing at was actually the uh, power supply and the hard drive was just slightly under that and it came out just pried it out. Uh, one of these fans has a really nice little heat sink on it. The other fan is just a standard fan and these go out from time to time so I always like to keep one or two handy and this is what we're after the uh, hard drive and they just come apart with these screws on the periphery and usually there's a couple in here that you have to dig for under this label so um, let me get the camera down on the table get it a little bit closer and we'll take the cover off of this thing now with the uh, hard drive, uh, I've got it just sitting on a, a cutting board. The screws are a very, very small, uh, almost a star. It's not a, an Allen won't fit. This is the only bit that I've ever found that fit these things even close. And I have to seat it and then get it broke loose and then have to work the um, the bit off of it this is about the worst part of getting these magnets out so that was the last screw I hope if it doesn't come off, I'm going to have to find these ones that are hidden down in here. It might be one there. I've never seen this combination of screw. a short one. And it wasn't that easy. So this is the thing that you have to get out. And 
I don't see any screws on this side. Since I don't care about it, let's see if this works. Ah, yes. Okay. That little thing right there, that's all we're after. Is just that magnet right there. And I don't know if it's worth that much to you, but uh, I really like these things. So let me show you how to pop these off. Don't, uh, they're pretty sensitive. If you try and knock it off with a hammer, uh, you'll break it into several parts. And I'll show you next um, the way that I have found to get them off uh, without breaking them. So here's the little piece that the magnet itself, here's the magnet. Uh, that it's glued to and like I say if you try to knock it off you're going to break it uh, so the best way I've found is to put this edge of the jaw right up against that corner uh, have the, the top of the, the vice jaw resting on this and when you put it in there you have to be pretty careful or you will get your fingers smashed, pinched anyway. And it doesn't take much, just a little bit of movement. There you go. Breaks it loose. Now let's try it again. I heard it click. Yeah, there we go. There you can see that it's not in the same place and the reason it's not coming off is because this piece here is metallic so you can see where the glue was down underneath it and there is the magnet and these things are just deadly I'll tell you once you get these things on when you when you put them on something be real careful because they're just going to give you a pretty good blood blister so now let's look at some of the things that I use these things for one of the things I use it on is my bandsaw this is an old 1932 uh, wood cutting bandsaw but as long as I've had it I've used it for more uh, it's probably cut more aluminum than uh, any any wood and whenever I need to brush off the aluminum chips I know that brush is right there this is my tap drawer and right here is the rapid tap stays right there on those magnets so Whenever I want to pick up a tap, my rapid tap is right nearby. Here on the carriage of my lathe, I have another uh, computer magnet stuck to the back there. That brush it goes everywhere the carriage goes, so that brush is always handy. Here I have an aluminum uh, cup that I use for my uh, cutting oil. There's a magnet down in the bottom 
and I can stick that right on the end of the cross slide. My oil is always handy and it's not going to knock off. Um, I was told back in the 50s by uh, Schuster's when I was a Schuster, when I was a uh, machinery apprentice, uh, I asked him how much oil he wanted in his in his cups for doing hand tapping and drilling. And the answer to that question is no more than you want to clean up. And here I have three different uh, magnet strips that you get from uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, on this one I have a wrench that I made. It's a uh, steel chainsaw wrench for spark plug. I welded a 916 socket on the end of it, cut the screwdriver thing off and made a, a handle for that. And this fits, this end fits the top of my quick release and this does all of the adjusters for the height. Uh, Allen wrenches, these take my uh, compound off. Uh, the, this wrench and these two bolts uh, are used for putting my radius turning tool on. Uh, got a broken uh, center drill. Uh, use that for deburring smaller parts. Countersink for deburring larger parts. Uh, deburring knife for both inside and outside. Uh, I've got a seven degree piece for setting my compound. Uh, if you set your compound at seven degrees or six degrees, uh, for every ten thousandths you move on the dial, it's one thousandth movement of the tool into the workpiece. Um, that comes in very handy for uh, press fits and for uh, very tight slip fits. Uh, this is a piece I made back in the 70s. Uh, it goes in the chuck on the lathe so I always know where center is. Uh, these are all just tool bits that I grind and can switch out. Uh, this is that parting tool that I got in uh, Pleasanton at the Good Guys Car Show. Uh, I've got to reform that and make it a little bit thinner. Uh, it's too thick to go onto my uh, parting tool holder. And then this magnetic strip uh, is where I keep all of my quick change tool bits and I just get these pegboard pegs. Uh, you have to cut these ends off to get them close enough. Uh, but they work just great. You just put it on there, slide it back, and the magnet just holds it in place real quick. Uh, they don't get a lot of chips or dust on them being up there. That might be something you can use. On my cutoff saw, as you saw in one of my other videos, uh, I have a computer magnet right here on the head. Uh, I, I like to keep it in a plastic bag. It makes it much easier to remove the chips. So that brush just lives right there. On the side of my drill press, I keep the magnets right there, brush stays right there. Uh, I don't like laying them down on a table or on a workbench or anything because you're always putting stuff on top of them. If you use a magnet like that, it's always going to be right where you put it. On my mill, I have a magnet stuck to the back of the table and I put a little red mark right here on the top 
of the chip guard so I always know where it's at. All right, I hope that was informative. I hope you can use some of those little uh, tips, places you can use magnets. Uh, thanks for watching.